Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. All right. <laughs> I think we're live now, and I think you hear me. All right. Yes. I think we're live now. All right, I, I hear myself over here. You hear me? Okay. That, that, that was a little bit embarrassing. Uh. All right. I, I hear myself over here. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's live uh, live streaming. Okay, uh, I had no sound, no, I had no audio, but I'm back. All right, uh, we'll we'll try this again, and I'll try to be uh, brief. Uh, today is October 10th. It's a cloudy day out, and we're having a special edition today of uh, Real Estate with Mr. G. So uh, here's my intro. <laughs> Welcome back. I know that's a, a little bit different from uh, what I've done in the past. Um, I try to make it lively and a little fun. Um, if people uh, who are watching know me or know me from my social media, I you know I do some funny stuff as well. And so when it comes to talking about real estate and, and bringing in facts and what's true, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I just mix in a little comedy, but I want to do this a little bit different this week because of, uh, what's going on. And, um, to reiterate when I do my shows, when I have articles on my blog, which by the way, it's updated the minimum of five times a week, Monday through Friday, we also put on videos um, and it's a snapshot of what the real estate market is at that point. Okay. So, um, and, and right now the real estate market is, is doing good. It's strong. The biggest thing is that we need, we really need listings. Um, so when that report goes out, that's the report of that week of what's going on, but we're not talking about what may happen in the future, okay? And way, what may happen if certain things do not take place. So I'm just gonna check uh, uh, quickly. In the future. Okay, um, my sound is coming in nice and clear. All right, so um, I'm reminded of, uh, of the Christmas Carol by Dickens. And there's a scene where um, he's, I'm going to get it up on the screen uh, where he meets the ghost. I'll put it live here. Okay. 
where he says, and uh, let me make let me make me smaller. Okay, make this bigger. Where he says, "Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or are they shadows of the things that may be only?" So that at this point of of the of the movie, he's met with the ghost of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future, and what he sees in the future does not look good, and it's it's horrible, and there's death, and he's scared, and he says, "Do these have to be?" these uh these shadows that i'm seeing now or can or can they be changed and that's basically what i really want to talk about today um talk about what may happen it does not necessarily necessarily have to happen um it um may happen if certain things do not happen right now which we will discuss all right so Let's let's take a look of um, and hold on for a second. And let me just see. Make sure that we have uh, me up here. What, what are you seeing now? You are actually seeing. <laughs> Okay, huh? Okay. All right, just had to get some information up here on the screen. Okay, so again, when I go live stream with our discussions and as well as my blog, on my daily, daily post on my blog, there are articles and episodes that reveal the current market of the real estate market. And frankly, the market, again, is doing very, very well, except that we new, need new listings. And I, I always bring that up. I constantly bring that up because we do. However, we are at a very critical point where if... Um, where if certain events do do or do not occur, the real estate in industry as well as the economy may have a bleak future. So this episode is not what is definitely going to happen in 2021, but what may happen. What might negatively affect the real estate market is, number one, the stimulus package that includes rental assistance, and the stimulus to check. Now, we know that many people have been laid off from the job. Some have gone back to work, but we see recently that um, more people are, uh, unfortunately, in the airline industry, in the hospitality industry, they are going into layoffs. Some are being furloughed. Some are being terminated, all right? So the extra $600 in unemployment insurance stopped at the end of August. And now we've had now in September, we're going to mid-October, where uh, this additional money is not there. People need this money to help to pay their rents and their mortgages, all right? And since the, the first one has ended without a new one coming along the horizon, uh, we saw at the beginning of the week that the president said he was going to stop talks on that. It hit the stock market very bad. And now he's saying he's he's agreeing to some aspects of the stimulus package. And we're still in that uh, in that negotiating mode. You know, whether or not he's going to pass one before the election or after election, um, that still might be up in the air. The longer it takes to get this money out, what's needed, and what's also included in that package, the more it's going to hurt the economy, and eventually it's going to hurt the real estate market. 
So out of work renters cannot pay rent. They may be evicted and owners and landlords may lose their homes or their investment properties, right? Because they're an investment property because he or she uh, cannot pay mortgage mortgages on their investment property. What can possibly happen next is that there will be a flood of foreclosures on the market. Now, for some investors who are cash rich, that may be a good thing. Um, since currently right now, and of course, because we came out of a period of, of a strong economy, presently right now, there aren't that many foreclosed or short sale properties on the market, which is a sign that the economy was going good uh, prior to the pandemic, all right? Um, if, if it continues and there's no other stimulus package out there, uh, that may change. So I, as I said before, uh, we are currently seeing layoffs of employees, such as in the airline and hospitality industries, the movie theaters, performances at various cultural venues have stopped. I know that the, uh, the Metropolitan Opera in New York City, uh, that has, uh, they have stopped now the season, at least to February. Um, I heard that one, it might've been Broadway, is not opening up to June of next year. Again, uh, it's a snowball effect or a Domino's nose effect. So the uh, industries, you know, that have, well, when we go to the performance industry, okay, uh, there, are, there are so many workers involved with performances. I mean, not just the performers, but the, the stage crew, the lighting, um, the maintenance, uh, but then when we, when we look outside of that, you know, we're looking at the uh, areas where you park your cars. They're losing money, the different lots, the different restaurants. Okay, all of this is, is accumulating. Um, just another side note, like, for instance, the American Theater in Phoebus, uh, which is uh, part of Hampton, uh, they're... Uh, expecting to have their season of live performances beginning in February. And that's great. And I love the American Theater. Um, and they have a very ambitious season starting in February. A lot of great stars. Um, I'm just hoping that uh, we do not have such an increase in COVID-19 cases that they will say well, we have to hold off on that. All right. But again, there's just restaurants in Phoebus, you know, uh, that uh, could be doing great. I mean, we're we're into October now, so we're in like in the second month of what a, would have been the fall season of performances, and uh, that's not happening right now. Let me just see where I am with my. Uh... Okay, I still have this up here. Okay, I could close this part down here. Just make me nice and big. Okay, um, what else are we seeing? We are seeing uh, termination of businesses, specifically small to medium-sized businesses that employ a large portion of the American wage earner. All right, so um, of course, excuse me, large corporations would hire thousands and thousands of workers, you're small to medium or, you know, maybe from, you know, from five employees up to a hundred. So it's a lot smaller, but there are more of the small to medium sized businesses across America. So, um, so they actually hire uh, as a whole, uh, a larger amount of the, uh, of the American wage earner. So as these begin to close down, you know, I've seen restaurants in our area close down. Um, that's going to hurt the economy. Um, we are also seeing a, a, a currently an increase, an increase of uh, cases and hospitalizations of, of COVID-19. And the tricky thing about this, and I, I truthfully hope you know, that there is a vaccine by November, December, um, but just the logistics of getting 
that vaccine to every single American, it's overwhelming. It's, it's, it's a, tre a tremendous feat that has to be done. And it's not going to be done in a month's time or two months. It's going to be spread out. I mean, first, they have to Im immunize the, the healthcare workers. They're, they're the, uh, the, the first ones are out there. They're the ones who are, who are working with, with the sick. So they have to be immunized first and maybe, maybe teachers, you know. The, you know, our first responders, our policemen, our firemen, our police people and, and fire people, uh, you know, they would have to be, uh, uh, and, and they're probably the aged before it goes to more of the general public, uh, you know, and, and the different ages, you know. I'm, I'm in an older age group, but they probably would first go to the ones that are in the nursing homes uh, and so forth, okay? So even once this vaccine comes out, you know, uh, there is a time period that it actually reaches everyone and we start seeing us uh, bringing, bringing down the cases of COVID-19, which at that point, we will go back to some kind of normal, whatever that is. I personally don't think that the normal will be the way it was uh, prior to the... Um, to the pandemic. Some changes we've made are actually very good changes. Um, personally, uh, I'll give you one example. And uh, believe it or not, uh, I, I do uh, go <laughs> to the Y to work out and I, and I love to swim. Prior to the pandemic, you know, you would go to the Y and, and, and hopefully there would be a lane available and hopefully you're not going there when there is a school that's practicing with their swim team. Now you go on your app, you see when the lanes are open and you reserve the app, I reserve the lane and that's for you and for you only. And I'm loving it. So there's no feeling that you're going to have to compete with somebody else or, or swim with somebody else in my lane, or I might not even get a lane and I really wanted to swim. So there are some good things that are coming about. Uh, because of the COVID-19, uh, I would also like to see, you know, with restaurants, and this may not be with the wants of a person who owns a restaurant, but I really don't like seeing overcrowding of restaurants. I would like to see spaces in between the tables, a good amount of space, so you're not sitting on top of each other. Um, so that's something that I see good that's coming out of this. All right. Now, the other thing, going back to our report, what else might be a negative outcome? Well, we're beginning to see inflation. And as factories and plants, industrial areas either have to close down or have a limited staff, the cost of items and goods uh, to be produced begin to rise, this cost. And that cost now is now being passed upon us. So if you have a plant, if you have a farm uh, with raising, you know, uh, uh, either cattle or, or, or chickens or pigs uh, that they're being raised for our consumption and there's less people working there, okay, uh, they're, they're producing less and prices will, will go up for that because they have to, there is some fixed cost that these, plant owners or farm owners have to pay no matter what, all right? So to, to cover those costs, then um, they raise prices. Even when you go to the cost of uh, building homes, um, a lot of contractors are having difficult times right now getting enough wood that they need, uh, you know, baseboards or whatever, uh, to do the work they have to because there are, are not enough people in the plants producing them, or those plants have shut down. So all of this begins to affect the cost of these items. They go up. And what's going hand in hand with this is we have a, basically a recession now. Again, to say positively, some people have gone back to work, but there's still a large amount of people now out of work, all right? And as some of these airlines begin to 
furlough or lay off more and more employees and hospitality industry, the hospitality industry, whether it's a hotel, whether it's a movie theater, if they close down, it's it's going to build up more and more a recession. Um, so you have stagnation, and stagnation is really a, a, a worse economic situation to recover from. So that is on our plate for the future. And then we have to discuss the GDP, the gross domestic product. And this is from a New York Times article that was originally published on July 30th, but updated on October 6th. And now I'm reading, quote, gross domestic product, the broadest measure of goods and services produced, fell 9.5% in the second quarter of the year as consumers cut back spending. The business pair investments and global trade dried up the Commerce Department said. The drop, the equivalent of 32.9% annual rate of decline, would have been even more severe without the trillions of, do trillions of dollars in government aid to households and businesses. Okay? So before we look over some headlines that I took this information from, um, two things have to happen for these shadows of the future not to, not to appear. We have to get the stimulus package back out, and it has to be soon, sooner than later, okay? And people need the 1,200, and, you know, depending on how long the pandemic goes on for, it might have to be maybe two infusions of $1,200, but that's a, another discussion okay people didn't need that money not just to purchase items but they needed then to pay their mortgages and rents which brings us to that the uh, there has to be that increase in your in the uh, uh, workers comp not workers compensation but the uh, unemployment insurance that's going to be needed for people then to because the twelve hundred dollars will go very very quick, um, they need that extra infusion of money in their weekly unemployment insurance. So number one, we need that new stimulus package, and number two, we have to get better control of this pandemic. And and that's that's so so basic. Um, we have states now. We're going into October where. They're back up. The amount of cases have gone back up um, and more hospitalizations and, and unfortunately more deaths. Now, I personally believe, and I'm not a doctor, uh, but it seems like when the warm weather's here and we're spending our uh, free time we're, when we're not in the office, but we're, we're outside and we're at the beach and we're at the pools and we're at the parks, and it seems when we're uh, infused with that fresh air and do activities in that fresh air, um, we're less likely to get COVID-19. And again, this is just an observation. But now we're in the fall. You know, the pools are closed. The, the beaches are closed for swimming. Uh, we have people now doing their activities, watching football games, uh, uh, different ball games, different sporting events. They're going to their favorite restaurant or bar, and they're close together and in close proximity, uh, uh, most likely with recycled air going through. It's not fresh air, and the numbers are going back up again. Same thing with schools. There's a lot of schools where – they do not have classes by open windows. The only air that they receive is from uh, air conditioning, that air that's recycled. Or even if it's not recycled, I mean, it's the same air. I mean, it's just like air coming in through the hallways. So, uh, and we noticed an increase as, as students went back to school. So we have to get on top of this. And... It has to be things like constantly when you're outside wearing your mask, 
do your best to keep six feet away from people, washing your hands. That's all so important to uh, defeat this pandemic. So um, I have over here too, let me get back to where I am. I actually usually show this at the beginning, but I'm going to do it as a recap of what we just talked about. And uh, let's get my nice little, because I was a teacher for 21 years, Let's a business teacher, and let's get my little uh, chalkboard up here. All right, and actually, uh, well, I would, we could use that. I had the actual drawing, but we'll use this. So to recap, what might negatively affect the real estate market? No new stimulus package, that, which is what we need. If we don't have that, rent payments are not being made. Landlords can make their own mortgage payments. And what happens, number three, we go into foreclosures. A lot of foreclosures, and uh, we could add short sales to that. We have a continuation of layoff of employees, terminations of businesses, and inflation. And what I should include in that is stagnation. And to go over a review of, let's see here.
the air. Okay. Is that we get the stimulus package out and that we get more control of the pandemic, get out a, um, a cure or a vaccine. The faster that takes, the faster we could avoid any uh, neg negative movements in both the economy and the real estate market. As of now, as of this moment, as of October 10th and prior, the real estate market is strong, but we do need listings. But if things don't change, if things don't get better as for um, the economy, as for jobs, as for inflation, um, as for people being laid off from work, as for people getting sick, uh, those shadows of the future uh, and those bad shadows of the future may, uh, may, may happen. And it may not happen, okay, if certain things take place. All right. That's like a nice comparison to a, a Christmas carol. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching again this season. Um, I wanted to add, since we do need listings, and I would love you to call me to list your house, or if you're ready to buy a house, call me, text me, uh, email me. Uh, but let me just show a little video uh, I did this week on pricing your house correctly. All right, so that's uh, for today's show. I hope you were able to hear me. Sorry about what happened at 10. Um, I don't know why you did not go to audio. <laughs> I apologize, but hopefully you watched it now. I will still repeat this episode at 5 p.m. like I usually do so um, uh, more people could see. So be well. Be safe. Wear your mask. Keep six feet apart. Wash your hands. And I'll see you next week, okay? Thank you very much.